<clears throat> Hi everybody, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna discuss precipitation and how do we even know when something's actually precipitated out of solution? Well, we can use the reaction quotient Q to determine if a solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. The trend to remember here is that if Q is less than KSP, you have an unsaturated solution. If Q is equal to KSP, then it is a saturated solution, which means that additional solute will not dissolve. And if Q is greater than KSP, you have a supersaturated solution. And that means that excess solute has already precipitated out. An additional solute will not dissolve in that solution. So let's work an example problem. Let's say we have a solution that contains one times 10 to the negative fifth molar of silver cations and two times 10 to the negative six molar phosphate ions. Will the silver phosphate precipitate? And so we've seen the reaction quotient before when we were discussing equilibrium. And I told you the clue to know when to use Q was if you heard the question or saw the question in the word problem, is the reaction at equilibrium? If so, what direction should it proceed to reach equilibrium? That was always the clue when you were talking about equilibria. Um, and we're talking about equilibria here um, in this context, but more specifically precipitation. So when you see the question, will an ionic compound precipitate out of solution, then you know you need to calculate Q because that here is what tells you if you have an unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated solution relative to the KSP. So first things first, you need to predict the ionic compound formula correctly. And so in this case here, the formula for silver phosphate, silver has a plus one charge, phosphate has three minus. So the formula is silver, and then you need three of those atoms to balance out the phosphate polyatomic ion. So that's most important because if you don't get that correct, then it, your products won't be correct, your KSP expression won't be correct. So for example, this dissolves to a small extent into three silver cations plus one phosphate polyatomic ion. And if you had to write the KSP expression for this ionic compound, products over reactants, it would be the concentration of the silver cation to the third power times the concentration of phosphate. Now we don't divide by silver phosphate because it's a solid and solids and liquids are never included in the equilibrium constant expression. Now you would need to look up the KSP for silver phosphate at 25 degrees Celsius is 8.89 times 10 to the negative 17th. Okay, so not very soluble at all. <laughs> all right, if this was an assessment, I would provide that number for you. All right, so we are giving these concentrations, and these concentrations are going to tell us if the silver phosphate will precipitate or not. And so we will have to calculate Q. Q has the same formula um, as KSP, but you're not plugging in necessarily the equilibrium concentrations. So we are plugging in one times 10 to the negative fifth to the third times two times 10 to the negative six. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get 2.0 times 10 to the negative 21. So when we see the Q and we compare it to the KSP, 
at this point in time, Q is less than KSP. So we have an unsaturated solution and therefore no precipitation occurs. We would need to have to we would need to add more silver phosphate in order for precipitation to occur. So we need to go past um, saturation. All right. So, continuing on our conversation regarding precipitation, you can selectively precipitate cations out of solution. Um, so sometimes, like, you may have two cations in solution, and you're like, man, I want to purify this. So you can use this method of selective precipitation to pull one cation out to separate from another. So selective precipitation is the addition of a reagent that precipitates, and I use PPT by the way, if you haven't noticed, for precipitates. Um, so that precipitates with one of the dissolved cations, but not the other. So for example, Let's say you had magnesium and sodium in an aqueous solution. And you want it to separate these two out from one another. Well, what you could do is you could add some base to that solution, some hydroxide. And magnesium hydroxide is pretty insoluble in water. So it would precipitate out, that's the solid. That's your precipitate, leaving the sodium cation in solution. So you could, um, once you do the selective precipitation, you could filter this out um, using gravity or vacuum filtration, and this would stay in the aqueous layer, and this would be um, a white powder. All right. So let's say, you know, let's work an example problem kind of quantifying this. Um, we have a solution of iron 2 plus cation and the magnesium 2 plus cation as well. And we're going to use potassium carbonate. We're going to use that to selectively precipitate one of the cations while leaving the other cation solution. We want to know which one of these cations will precipitate first. All right, so let's go ahead and do this calculation. And we'll also calculate the minimum concentration of potassium carbonate that will trigger the precipitation. I'm going to actually work the bottom here. We'll need a little bit more space. So you want to look up the KSP. And the cation that we're working with first is iron 2 plus. And potassium carbonate is K2CO3 will dissolve in solution into potassium ions plus the carbonate polyatomic ion. Just as a side note there. So you have to predict, um, you know, what is the iron actually going to precipitate with, right? So iron 2 plus, do you think it wants to be anywhere near um, the positive or, yes, the positive um, potassium cation? No, they don't want to mix, right? Um, what about the carbonate? Yeah, so these two will want to mix together. All right, so you have to predict the formula of that. If it's iron 2 plus, carbonate has a 2 minus charge, then you're looking at the KSP for this formula here. FeCO3, iron 2, carbonate. Once again, that's really important for us to do that correctly because we need to be able to predict the KSP expression. So it'll be the concentration of iron 2 plus, concentration of the carbonate, everything's one to one in this case, um, based on the ionic compound formula. And when you look up the KSP value, it is 3.07 times 10 to the negative 11th. 
Now I've put in 0 0.022 molar of the iron 2 plus cation. I want to know what the concentration of carbonate I need to reach precipitation, to reach that saturation there. When you solve for carbonate, you get 1.4 times 10 to the negative ninth molar. And since carbonate is one to one with potassium carbonate, it's a one to one mole ratio, then the concentration of potassium carbonate needed to precipitate out the iron two carbonate is 1.4 times 10 to the negative ninth molar. That's what's needed to precipitate iron 2 carbonate. All right, so let's do the same thing for magnesium carbonate. So once again, this cation is going to mix with that anion there, and they will want to, they're also going to mix in a one to one ratio because they have the same charge. So it'll look like this magnesium carbonate. And so the KSP expression is magnesium two plus times the carbonate is equal to, and you'd have to look up the KSP value, 6.86 times 10 to the negative six. Now we're putting in 0.014 molar of magnesium, I'm trying to figure out how much carbonate is needed to precipitate out the magnesium carbonate. When you rearrange the equation to solve for the concentration of the carbonate, um, we get 4.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar, and therefore the concentration of potassium carbonate needed, because that's what you're adding in solution, is 4.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar to precipitate magnesium carbonate. All right, so based on this information here, which will precipitate first? Will it be the iron two carbonate or will it be the magnesium carbonate? Yeah, definitely um, the iron two carbonate. You need a lower concentration of potassium carbonate in order to start precipitating it out. So the iron two cation will precipitate first. Okay, now the second question is, and I'll have to work it above, but what remaining concentration of cation um, that precipitates first will be remaining while the other cation begins to precipitate? So we wanna know how much iron is still left in the solution when the magnesium begins to precipitate. Okay, so let's go ahead and work that one. I'll work it in green. So this is part B. So we're gonna use the KSP of the iron three carbonate and its expression. And magnesium carbonate begins to precipitate when the concentration of carbonate is 4.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar. So we'll plug that in. We're gonna solve for the iron two plus cation here. But we'll plug in the concentrated carbonate once the magnesium carbonate begins to precipitate. So that's 4.9 times 10 to the negative fourth. And the concentration of iron at this point in the pers selective precipitation would be 6.3 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. So pretty dilute. But it's some of it's still left over in solution even when the magnesium carbonate begins to precipitate. All right, so once again in review, 
we can use Q to determine if our solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. You just need to compare it to the KSP value as we did here in this example problem of silver phosphate. We can then use selective precipitation by adding another reagent to two cations, for example. One of the dissolved cations will precipitate, but not the other. Um, and so in this case here, I chose an example where sodium hydroxide doesn't really precipitate. It's very soluble in water. You have to add a ton of it um, for it to become a supersaturated solution. So magnesium hydroxide would precipitate. In this example, both of them are relatively insoluble in water. However, we were able to quantify how much of the reagent we needed to add to begin precipitation of both iron 2 carbonate as well as the magnesium carbonate. We determined that the iron 2 plus cation will precipitate first. But even when magnesium carbonate begins to precipitate, once we've added 4.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molar of the carbonate solution, we still have a little bit of that iron cation hanging around that hasn't precipitated yet. All right. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.